This is the cover art for Elden Ring, something you're probably very familiar with. But have you ever looked really closely at it? In particular, who is this? Because it's not you, it's not the Tarnished, the character we play as. The canon armour that the Tarnished wears is the Raging Wolf set. This is what's been used in the game trailer and for previews. But this doesn't match that set. This armour is from the Fingerprint set, a set worn by the almost Elden Lord, Vike. Now some of you may be thinking, surely this Vike character must be pretty important to be featured in this iconic cover art. I mean, this is the character who was featured in a lot of preview material, and for a lot of people before they played Elden Ring, they assumed this was the protagonist. I'm going to discuss Vike's story, or rather, what is left of it. If you travel to the Church of Inhibition, you will be invaded by a spirit, the festering fingerprint, Vike. His signature weapon is a war spear, singed and blistered by fingers. This spear inflicts madness upon its target, but also its wielder. So first thing you need to know about Vike, uh, he's crazy. <laughs> he uses incantations from the School of Frenzied Flame, spells of mutually assured destruction, characterised by a yellow flame. In times past, every single person who attempted to control the Flame of Frenzy succumbed to madness after a desperate internal struggle. Now why would anyone subject themselves to this? Well the answer can be found in an item that drops from this invader. He drops a grape. In this game, grapes are eyeballs. It's a whole thing. But what's special about this yellow eye is that the surface has been branded by a fingerprint. Not just any fingerprint. This is the mark of the flaming hot three fingers. Now if you're unaware, the three fingers are the antithesis to the two fingers. They are a symbol of chaos, and those who worship the three fingers reject order. In fact, the weapon art on Vike's spear leaves a mark which looks very similar to three fingers. And if you pursue the three fingers in your playthrough, this will lead to the frenzied flame ending. So why did Vike choose to do this? Why did Vike choose to do the frenzied flame ending? After defeating Vike, this is not the last time we'll see him. He also appears in boss form later in the game. If you travel to the mountaintop of the giants, he will actually be imprisoned in a jail there, a never jail. Defeating him will reward you with his armour set, with some big lore attached to the description. No other tarnished was closer to the throne of the Elden Lord than Vike. Vike travelled far below the capital and was scorched by the flame of frenzy. Did he make his choice for his maiden? Or did some other force lure him with suggestion? First of all, he was on a similar level to Godfrey, someone who had the potential to become Elden Lord easily. This fight even takes place in the Lord Contender Everjail. But what's different about this fight is that he doesn't use madness like in the Invader fight. His signature spear that was once imbued with the flame of madness now crackles with red lightning. See, in his prime, Vike harnessed the power of dragon cult incantations. He had such a gift of doing so that this particular enhancement we see was actually named after him. Vike's Dragon Bolt. Of all the knights, Vike the Dragon Spear was the one Lanceax loved the most. Lanceax was the sister of Fortisax, and it is said that she took the form of a human to commune with the knights as a priestess. So Vike was powerful enough to develop his own dragon incantation through working with Lanceax, or she liked him so much that she directly taught him, dedicating the spell to him, giving it his name. Vike is on a whole other level. But what happened? Why did Vike not become Elden Lord and restore order to the Lands Between? What did he do to get locked up in this Everjail? Well, he had the misfortune of crossing paths with a tricky fellow called Shibriri. The sickness of the Flame of Frenzy began with Shibiri, the most reviled man in history. He will warn us. You are about to sacrifice something precious, the life of a fair maiden, that you would toss into the fiery forge, only so that you may be lord. Your ascendancy requires her sacrifice, whether she wishes it or not. Now the sad thing is, he's not wrong about this. And it's very likely that he said these words to Vike as well. Descend into the depths far below the Erdtree capital, 
seek audience with the three fingers and the flame of frenzy. If you inherit the flame of frenzy, your flesh will serve as kindling, and the girl can be spared. Which explained why he travelled far below the capital to where the three fingers inhabit. But did Vike actually do this because he wanted to save his maiden? Or did he do it because Shaburi told him something different? Swayed him with the promise of power that the flame would give him? See, Shaburi doesn't actually care about saving maidens. That's just something he says to disorientate our moral compass. Shaburi only wants one thing. Ah, uh, may chaos take the world. May chaos. chaos! And recruiting the next Elden Lord would be a powerful asset to help usher in the Age of Chaos. Remember where we had previously met Vike? At the Church of Inhibition? If you look around this area, what else do you find? A finger maiden. A dead finger maiden. And the game files actually prove that this maiden was Vike's finger maiden. Did the maiden do this to herself out of despair? Was she broken from seeing her master turn to madness? And by extension, she couldn't bear the weight of failure? Or did Vike, in his insanity, do this to her? Finger maiden serves the two fingers, so he would now see her as an enemy, as a reminder. So he had to take her out. Which one do you think it is? But another question remains. If Vike was so powerful and served the three fingers, why did he not become the Lord of Frenzied Flame? Well, if you look at the fingerprint armor set, you can see that parts of it have melted off. These are in the exact places that the three fingers make contact with when you pledge yourself to them. So just like that mark on his eyeball, Vike's whole body was burned. The armor melted. It was seared with a repulsive fingerprint burn akin to those that marred his entire body. There is one glaring difference between what happened to Vike and what happens to us. A prerequisite for this cutscene is that we have to disrobe entirely. Vike, however, kept his armor on, which is why we can see the mark. This could be a programming thing. It's a lot easier to not have to render a melting effect on every single armor variant that the player could have in this cutscene. Or it could be that because Vike kept his armor on, he was unable to be granted the power of the frenzied flame. It's symbolic. He didn't welcome the flame. He didn't truly open himself up. The power was not physically imparted into his being. He was not the chosen one. Additionally, when you defeat Festering Fingerprint Vike, there is a ghost who previously adored him, kept singing his praises. But then after you defeat him and you return, he says that he was no true lord at all. So because of this, Vike may have become enraged that he wasn't deemed worthy and fell more into his madness and lashed out everything that got in his way. But as a result, he was caught and he was locked away in the Everjail, a tarnish that was closest to becoming Elden Lord, locked away after being seduced by the flame of frenzy. That's it? See, I wondered why I was having trouble piecing together Vike's story, but in reality, there's really not a lot here. A lot of content was cut. I had the pleasure of watching Sekiro Doobie's video, where they explore unused game files, which hint that Vike was actually able to be summoned in Stormvale, possibly to assist in a boss fight with us, an ally. I encourage you all to go and watch their full video on this and subscribe to their channel. I absolutely love seeing smart people decode this data. This seems like a major thing to take out, but perhaps they removed it because it didn't make sense for Vike to assist us, as technically your rivals. You have the same goal of becoming Elden Lord, unless they had a plan for some epic 1v1 at the very end where, you know, you have to choose who's going to become Elden Lord. That would have been really interesting. Or maybe at this point in time, Vike would already be insane and therefore he would be hostile towards us, just like the other two instances of fighting him. And another unanswered question, like there weren't enough already. Why are there two versions of Vike? So there are other versions of characters like the Dung Eater. You have his spirit version in the round table hold, but you also have his physical self, which is locked in the jail. Vike is the same, 
A theory for this is that red spirits are able to freely move because they are technically invading other people's worlds. Just like when you choose to invade someone's world, you go to their realm. Everything exists within their universe, but when you return to yours, it's as you left it. Some people theorize that like Faramazula, Evergels are locked in time. Perhaps in the past, we're seeing Vike at his prime when he was able to harness the dragon spells. It's a shame that a character with so much potential had his content just reduced to a couple of fights. Vike is literally the poster boy of Elden Ring. He deserves much more attention. I would love to see something, anything, in DLC format. Please, just a crumb of lore. Please add your findings about Vike in the comments below. I really want to see if I've missed anything, really. It would just be a big shame if that's all there was to him. Yeah, rip Vike. We were robbed. <laughs> I didn't say this before, but I hit 10k subscribers on here so quickly and it's really only hitting me now how crazy this has all been. I never really imagined myself making videos, talking and having people come and listen and be so supportive. I'm not gonna cry. Not right now, this isn't the, this isn't the crying video. <laughs> Seriously, thank you everyone. I couldn't ask for a better audience. Thank you for being here and I, I really hope you enjoy whatever I have next to make. So just thank you everyone. Have a great day. Bye now.